All right, guys, the Houston Rockets and James Harden goes off against the Utah Jazz. This is Hanson James and the SLC Dunk post game show reaction. You guys, what happened tonight is kind of ridiculous. I have not seen a performance like this from a player maybe I've ever. I mean, honestly, the tonight what James Harden did was absolutely ridiculous. This is I that it's the best shooting performance I've ever seen. I'm absolutely like I don't know what to say. I cover the Jazz every game. I write about the Jazz. I talk about the Jazz. I do these post-game reactions to the Jazz. James Harden dismantled the Utah Jazz tonight like by himself. I the Jazz were throwing everything at him and he was making literally everything. And that's not a joke. Literally. In the first half of the game, James Harden goes 10 for 10. The stupidest stat of the night was the fact that James Harden was the same at the free throw line as he was at the three-point line. So he was 5 for 5 from 3, 5 for 5 from the free throw line. What? How do you, how do you stop that? Like, there's a part of me that says this is such a bad loss for the Utah Jazz that maybe you just give up, you know, and say maybe this is the time to to look at some trades and and maybe tank a little bit because Hayward's gone. And so, you know, maybe that's your best option. Maybe Luka Doncic is your best finale to the season instead of like a low playoff berth. But I kind of think that James Harden just went thermonuclear. Like, he just went bonkers tonight. There's nothing you can really do. I mean, he was phenomenal, and it was interesting to watch him. So he he goes five for five from three, and some of those threes were ridiculous. If you watch, like, you need to go watch that game if you didn't because it was incredible. James Harden in one game just showed why he can be. He is definitely an MVP candidate this year. So if you haven't, go watch the Who's the MVP video this this season. We talked about LeBron James dropping fifty seven. I mean, Harden dropped 56 tonight, but he did it in 25 minutes or something like that. Let's see. So Harden goes 35 minutes, 35 minutes to drop to drop 56 points. On top of that, he had 13 assists. How do you stop that? I don't know what you do because and it wasn't like the Jazz aren't guarding. And that's another thing. This might be incredible because the Jazz right now are the top three defense in terms of defensive rating, and on basketball reference are the best defense in the league when you, you when you count the fact that the Jazz have played better offenses than the Celtics have. So James Harden might well have done this performance against the best defense in the league. What do you do? How do you stop it? I don't know what you do. <laughs> I don't know. I am befuddled. James Harden just kind of destroyed the jazz and all you can do is tip your hat to james harden he's incredible like the the fact that he was doing these step back threes and just burying them was unbelievable it had to be so deflating for utah to play to play hard on harden stay in front do your best to not foul him he just does a step back three buries it and then he does it five times and the thing is is rudy gobert had a really nice start to the game so if you watch that game rudy gobert the first two possessions the, the Rockets had that went to the rim, Rudy Gobert blocked and stuffed it and started new possessions. I think actually it was the first three. The Jazz had a nice start, started the game with a lead, and then Harden just went to work. And you'll you'll notice whenever Harden went to guard to go at Rudy, he he didn't go to the rim because he knew Rudy blocked it. That's the respect Harden has for Rudy Gobert. But he just does that little step back mid range jump shot with that incredible hesitation and body control that Harden has. It's really incredible. And he just has that little step back, you know, eight foot shot and makes it every time. It was unbelievable. Harden was unbelievable tonight. I honestly don't know what else you can get from this other than that Harden shot. Let's see. So let's just look at the numbers 19 for 25. So he shot 76% from the field. He shot seven for eight from the three-point lines for 87%. I mean, that's this is stupid 2K numbers. That's ridiculous. He was 11 for 12 from the free throw line. So he was just, if he'd have shot as many free throws as he did three-pointers, that would have been the same. So he's seven for eight from three. <laughs> that's like silliness. Uh, 13 assists, uh, two steals. For just and for a plus minus of plus twenty five against the best defense in the NBA, that's unbelievable. 
it's the performance of the year. We had LeBron, and now we've got this James Harden performance. It's that that basket looked just so wide open, and because the Jazz have to guard him, and they were double teaming him at times, he was able to open it up, and that's when he gets the 13 assists. And to the Rockets' credit, their entire team was doing well. So Ryan Anderson was 52 for four. I mean, why would you have anyone else shoot up than Harden? But he was two for four from three for 50 percent from three. Trevor Ariza, four for eight from three, 50 percent. Eric Gordon, six for 11 from three, 54 percent. What the heck? What in the world is going on? If the Rockets can shoot like that, they beat anybody. I mean, nobody's beating the Rockets after a performance like that tonight. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. I don't know what else to say other than the Rockets just went, you know, they used up like some secret experience boost at the beginning of the game to help them win. I don't know. They like had some microtransaction they did at the beginning and they got this win. So good for the Rockets. There's not a lot to say for the Jazz other than that Donovan Mitchell score shot above 40% from three again. Leading scorer for the Jazz again, 17 points. There's a lot of interesting things with Utah right now. Rodney Hood, uh, let's see, five for ten from the field, so fifty percent, not bad. But one for six, one for six from three for Rodney, continuing continuing to just kind of struggle. I think Rodney's really struggling with who he is as a player, and this season is really when he has to figure out what he is. Like, are you a spot up three point shooter? Are you a dribble drive guy? He he's just. I mean, unless he gets a game where he goes to the rim, he's not going to be an elite scorer. You know, forget about – Col- I just don't know if, if Rodney Hood's ever going to be an elite scorer because to be an elite scorer, you have to be able to go to the rim and get free throws. Like, one of the reasons that James Harden has such a big night and tonight was because of his shooting was just ridiculous. But on nights when Harden doesn't have the greatest touch and his shot's just not falling, you're still going to get incredible – production because he goes to the line at such an incredible rate Harden's just the best foul he's just the best at drawing fouls in the NBA and and he hits his free throws at an incredible rate so he's 11 for 12 from the free throw line tonight his touch was golden it was incredible so anyone if you didn't watch this if it's on your DVR go watch it especially if you're a Rockets fan if you're a Jazz fan it might be self-harm to watch this again it's really not fun for Jazz fans you ruined my night James what are you doing to me why? Why you got to do the jazz like that? Ah, anyways, uh, Donovan looked really good for the jazz yet again, just showing that he probably needs to be getting starter minutes. And I don't know what spot you put him on, but Donovan Mitchell, six for 13, 46% from the field. That's, that's good. It's not the, you know, 9 million percent from the field that James Harden had, but it's really good for a rookie three for seven from three from Donovan. So he's shooting 42% again from three. The guy is showing out to be one of the best rookies in the NBA. He's really been phenomenal. And if you take out the the first three games when Donovan shot like oh, one for 17 from three, when he was just like, I mean, you could tell the adrenaline was just crazy with Donovan. Uh, he's finally calmed down. I was talking to someone earlier. I think the, the grind of the NBA has actually been good for Donovan because it's forced him to kind of slow down and almost like, you know, get into a flow and a groove, get tired a little bit. And so that you don't have that crazy adrenaline that just made his shots go long every time. Now he's hitting shots at a regular rate. He's really becoming our, one of our best weapons, if not already. Um, another thing I liked from the jazz tonight, Joe Ingles was actually attacking the rim a little bit. I want more from Joe Ingles. He shoots an incredible three point rate tonight. Joe Ingles was two for three from three. I want Joe to shoot the three, six times, you know, he's a incredible three-point shooter one of the best in the nba and he just needs to shoot more that's going to be the thing with ingles every night but i did love that he goes to the hoop and and he got one free throw which was an and one but but joe ingles just needs to shoot the ball more because he's a 45 percent three-point shooter anytime joe joe ingles shoots the ball especially an open three it's that's good offense for the jazz so it's just something they need to do and right now with having donovan mitchell be one of our best offensive players as a rookie and Joe Ingles is a spot-up three-point shooter. We just need offense where we can get it. And Joe Ingles shooting the ball is what we need. So so anytime Joe Ingles gets the ball and is on the three-point line, he has to shoot it. Has to, has to shoot it. Because the Jazz can't afford it otherwise. Especially against a team like the Rockets, who are just explosive on offense. Tonight was incredible. I, I mean, I can't get over how good the Rockets were on offense tonight. If the Rockets can play this well, 
then look out Western Conference and NBA. And you know what? People might talk about the fact that the, how the, good the Rockets are playing without Chris Paul. I really love the fact that they're going to get Chris Paul later in the year and not necessarily you know, during the regular season. I actually think it might hurt them a little bit in the regular season because the Rockets have just this incredible system that just everything runs through Harden and he's able to set guys up, hit, get them to get threes and... You know, it's just perfect for a regular season to just run everything through Harden. It's very simple to run that every single night. Harden's just an elite, elite player that just will get buckets and get other people buckets. But the thing is, is in the in the playoffs, we've seen that 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 just Harden gets worn out. It's hard to be the main guy in playoff series where they're just guarding you like crazy. Things slow down like crazy, and Harden's going to need CP3. If you want to see what CP3 is going to do for the Rockets, watch what happened last year in the playoffs with the Jazz and Clippers. Chris Paul was unreal against the Jazz, especially in closing game situations. He was really good. So that's going to be a an option for the Rockets in the playoffs that Harden's not going to have to do everything. He's not going to get worn out. There's he's going to have he's going to be able to take turns with CP3 and that works in the playoffs. If you've got two guys like Harden and CP3 who can get buckets when the defense is playing you tight in half court situations, you're in good shape. So it's not necessarily going to help them in the regular season, maybe, but it absolutely is going to be great for them in the playoffs. And I, I, I love the idea of having Chris Paul and James Harden take turns. It's like taking 50% of the load off Harden's back, and, and he's going to be great. Isaac Breezy, James Harden was on fire. Yes, he was. He was hotter than fire. What's hotter than fire? Like, like the sun? Is there anything that's hotter than fire? Like lava? Molten lava? He was like inner core of the earth hot tonight it was incredible he was he was like i don't know in he just was hitting everything he took the 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 basket couldn't have been bigger for him it just was like one of those nights where harden's just dropping it in so props to james harden and the houston rockets you have a really impressive offense harden was just unreal tonight mvp stuff that you know if you're a rockets fan you got to be excited if you're a jazz fan you'd be frustrated but at the same time Harden does this sometimes. He's just an incredible player, and the Jazz have not been good on the road this year so far, so they've got to figure out a way to win a few games on the road, uh, get back to that defensive mindset that they have, and go at home and win some games against some teams that you should beat. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, anyways, like, subscribe, guys. Uh, go to SLC Dunk. Read all our stuff. Comment. Become a fan on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us. Uh, I'll talk to you later.